Who is the Prime Chapar? Should Chiefs actually bother signing him or should they just let him be? Hello and welcome to Coast Nation Fan TV. I am Pelo, I am your host. This is where fans meet and talk about KZ Chiefs, Amako C Football Club. And we are talking about a 20 year old Nigerian central midfielder who goes by the name of Ibrahim Chapar. Now, I will talk about why Chiefs should sign him and what are the cons of signing him. So let's start with the pros, obviously. The first one is that Uzwan has been talking a lot about players. Uguti, he wants to see his players playing with arrogance. And he's definitely one of those players who is not just playing with a confidence. He seems to be very confident. And that is when he played for Olisa anyway. We will talk about the difference between how he plays for Stellan Porsche and how he played for Olisa as well. But that we'll talk about that later on in the video. And the second thing is that there is a difference, obviously, between a player who is confident and he can't do anything with the ball. But also, Paul Kontroliak is really, really, really good because each of sometimes you play against teams that are compact and they're making sure good they're preventing you from making these intricate passes that we've seen him to play with Utole, sometimes with Usaile. And you're going to need more players like that, which is going forward because... It's clear Ugutu Zwane, that's what he's trying to get his players to do. Play the ball, make these fine, intricate passes, make a move. And I think Uchapar fits that style of play a lot. And he would benefit from playing alongside players who are also playing that style of play. And something that is a pro and kind of a con is the versatility. What do I mean by versatility being a con? Because here's the thing. Now, Gustel and Porsche, they are playing him. They've played him as a left back. They've played him as a defensive midfielder as well. But that is problematic at times. Here's why. Because you have Ustebe, you have Umat. We know both of them, Guti, they are more of attacking midfielders than holding midfielders. But Guichi, you see, they are played in those positions as a defensive midfielder. And at times you see Umat, Guti, he knows Guti. In terms of the formation, in terms of the structure of the team, he's supposed to play as a defensive midfielder. But at times, you see Uguti wants to venture forward, but then he's thinking, who's going to be covering for me? And that is why sometimes I feel like this thing, Uguti, oh, this player can also play as a defensive midfielder becomes a problem, Uguti. You just need to have a specialist player in, a pos in each and every position. And then the other players should sustain that because what I fear Uguti Chiefs might just sign him and say oh he's going to be a defensive midfielder but sometimes he can be an attacking midfield and the problem with that is that he could be 70% attacking midfielder but 45% defensive midfield and in that way it could be like oh no we gave you a defensive midfielder but it's not really his specialty in terms of his position so in a way there would be a shortcut into getting someone who's sort of a defensive midfielder but is also just a central midfielder so there is what i'm saying that versatility i'm no longer kind of okay with it because of what it has shown me with usteb and omat uguti it just can affect a team in a negative way at times and the players themselves as well guys if you're enjoying this video so far please do like the video it helps me to reach more people like you now on to the cons the fact that this season he has only started 11 games i know that's quite a lot and he's been subbed four times and then set on the bench once this league so that's 16 games in total the issue though is the fact that in those games in the past four he's not even been available to play now when i checked i did not see what he's injured if he's injured then it changes the whole thing but if he's not injured according to my research nyana then that means each team is fighting relegation and this player is like deemed unnecessary by the coach it then says to me wait a minute belly chiefs is at another level and Estel and Porsche are kind of now nah, in a level where they need all their best players and if Estel and Porsche are considering you as not a an important player then what are you going to do when you come to achieves because if a team that's fighting relegation doesn't see you as a necessary weapon to help them escape relegation how much more for a team that will be fighting league titles that will be playing in the champions league 
Like, what are you going to do? But then the argument to that would be kind of good. Eastern Bosch play a different brand of football compared to Chiefs. And that is why he could not be fitting in the style. Because for one, they're playing him as a defensive midfielder. And as I said, when he played for Olisa uh, in Nigeria, he was playing more as an attacking midfielder, even drifted to the right wing to get the ball there and collect there. So if you are asked to play a different position from the one that you excel in, then you're not going to perform as well as in your natural position. As such, your performances will suck. And if your performances suck, then you get benched. And as a result, you look like you're a bad player because some stats will show Ugu team you are not good at playing in that regard. Now, the other thing is that each Chiefs will have to decide, obviously, Ugu Quistel and Bosch, we are linked with Umendieta, we are linked with Umteto, and now we are linked with Uchapar. Out of those three players, realistically, how many can Chiefs sign? Because last season we already took two of their best players. We took Ukwenenka, we took Dupri, we took a striker, and then we took a defender as well. At one point, or at some point, Eastel and Bosch are going to say, you know what, this is actually not working for us. Even if Chiefs is giving us good money, but if we're going to keep on losing our best players to Chiefs, then we're going to get relegated. And we should hold on to some of our best players. And that might not be Uguti they hold on to Chapar because he's also 20. They know Uguti. If Omiyake could pick up this season and he could be worth more money next season and he will just be 21. And that means they will get more money for him. So I think Estelle and Porsche at some point will just have to... I mean, like if I was somewhere, we bought Estelle and Porsche, I would be like, guys... At some point, we need to like grow some stones and say, no, we're not going to sell our best players. Let's develop our other good players while we're transitioning these players out of the team and making money on them as we sell them. Because I'm sure, Guti, right now, as he's getting benched, if value is not as high as it would be if he was playing consistently. And then that means right now, if he chips wanted to buy him from Stellan Porsche, it would be like for change with regards to how much Stellan Bosch would want to sell a player who has such a good potential. And the other thing in Guguti, he's obviously not a South African player. And not, by not being a South African player, that means the Chiefs will have to prioritize Guti to assign this central midfielder slash defensive midfielder to fill in those foreign spots. Or do we actually go out and find someone who's a specialist, maybe a striker, maybe a defensive midfielder, to fill that uh, foreign spot that's remaining because you don't want to sign a player, Caleb, and then have them just occupy space, literally like so good he's a foreigner in your team and you can't have more than five. And then now you can't sign more players because you already have a lot of foreign players in your team. And they, those spots are already like, what's the word? are already filled up as such, you can't sign the players that you actually need more than that player that you have signed for that position. So I think if the Chiefs makes the signing, they would make it or they should make it after they've prioritized Oguti. We have a defensive midfielder, maybe we got him outside if we end up not signing Umteto, or we already got Umteto as a defensive midfielder, so... Going forward, our other players that we need that we can sign from abroad, maybe it's one player, so okay... Uh, we still have a foreign spot remaining, so we can sign Uchapar. That's the only other thing that needs to be taken into account, obviously, when signing him. Let me know what you think down on the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, remember, share the video. Ikus. I'll pay you more.